and welcome to another episode of GSC at Home. Today, we're going to learn about some outdoor friends of ours that we like to call mini beasts and I'm going to show you how you can do your very own bug count. Let's get started! Firstly, let's think about what that word mini beast actually means and we can do that by breaking the word into two pieces, mini and beast. Something that is many is very small. It's teeny tiny. And the word beast can sometimes make us think of a monster or even something scary. But actually, when we use the word beast, we just mean an animal. So if something is a mini beast, it's a very small animal. We're talking about bugs. There are lots of types of mini beast. Things like flies, ants, snails, ladybirds, and lots more. How many can you name? There are a few things that make mini beasts very interesting, starting out with a big difference between mini beasts and us. Let's discover it together. I want you to use your fingers, pop them onto your back and run those fingers up and down the middle of your back. There's something hard that runs all the way down the centre of your back. What's that called? It's your spine or backbone. We humans have a spine. It's an important part of our skeleton, but many beasts don't even have a skeleton or backbone inside their bodies. We can give animals without a backbone a science name. We can say that they are invertebrates. There are lots of these invertebrates that do like to protect themselves though, and they do this with something called an exoskeleton. If something has an exoskeleton, that means that it has a skeleton on the outside of its body, wearing it more like a suit of armour. All insects have exoskeletons, so that includes beetles, ants and flies. Other mini beasts with exoskeletons are things like snails with their shell, millipedes and spiders. Let's move on and think about something else which is interesting about our mini beasts, which is that they actually have lots of jobs to do. Let's explore some of the most important ones. Now, we know that bees are always very busy making honey and an important step in making honey is gathering up nectar, which the bees find in flowers. Bees also collect pollen from flowers, which they do also eat. But when they're doing all this collecting, some pollen gets stuck to their bodies. They fly to the next flower, carrying this extra pollen and drop some of it there, which is actually really helpful for making new plants. We need that pollen to get from flower to flower, as this is when new seeds are made. This whole process is called pollination, and without the bees carrying out pollination, we wouldn't see anywhere near as many new plants popping up. And they're not the only many beasts carrying out pollination. They get help from wasps, ants, flies, mosquitoes, butterflies, moths and beetles. Another super job that all mini beasts do is recycling lots of waste material like dead leaves and animal poo. When they eat this waste, of course it turns into poo inside their bodies, but when they drop that poo into the soil, it is full of nutrients. Nutrients are one of the things plants need to grow big and strong. Big strong plants are a good source of food for other animals, including humans, and help to keep the whole planet healthy by encouraging biodiversity. If we have biodiversity here on Earth, that means that we have a large variety of plants and animals, which is essential for many reasons, such as slowing down climate change, growing food, keeping the oceans clean and keeping us alive. Thanks to those mini beasts for recycling. Many beasts are also a really important food for a lot of animals like birds. We really need them to keep our whole planet going. But do you know what mini beasts are living near you? I'm going to show you how to find out with your very own bug count. Before we begin, there are a couple of things we need to remember. Any mini beasts that we find today aren't ours to keep. Once we've had a look at them and counted them, we're going to carefully place them back where we found them and we want to make sure that our mini beasts aren't hurt by us during our bug count. Remember, they are living things too and they also have jobs that they need to get back to. Also, there are certain types of mini beasts 
that we don't want to touch, like bees and wasps. If we see them, we can still count them, but we should leave them alone and let them carry on their very important work. If you don't have access to a garden, don't worry, you can still do your very own bug count when you're next out for a walk to get some exercise. Getting your daily exercise is very important right now, and doing a bug count at the same time makes it even better. But the most important thing to remember is to keep following social distancing rules and always keep yourself and others safe by staying more than two metres away from people you might encounter along the way. For your bug count walk, you'll need a pen or pencil and a place to take notes like a notebook. What you're going to do is go for your walk as normal and keep an eye out in particular for mini beasts that fly. We are thinking about bees, wasps, butterflies and flies, and any others that you see. What you can do is keep a note of the different places that you walk through and count how many mini beasts you see in that kind of area. For example, you might walk along a pavement on your walk and then enter a park. So you could create a page in your notebook that looks like this. You can copy this handy table into your notebook before your walk. It will help you to keep track of the types of mini beasts you saw and the area that you saw them. You can change the table to suit your walk and the kind of places you walk through. And you can also add on more types of mini beasts that you see along the way. It's a good idea to get your adult to do the writing while you keep looking around as you walk, telling them when you've seen a mini beast. The way that I've counted mini beasts is by using tally marks. I'll show you how it works. Every time I see a fly on my walk, for example, I would draw a line in the section for flies. I do this four times, but the fifth time I see a fly, I draw a diagonal line like this. Then I go back to drawing up and down lines like this. Using tally marks makes it much easier to count my final result as I can count up in fives for every little block. In total, I saw five, 10, 15, 16, 17 flies. If you carried out a bug count on your walk, did you manage to see many mini beasts out on the streets? Were there more or less mini beasts in the park? Where in the park did you see mini beasts? Were they near plants or flowers? Did you see any mini beasts you've never seen before? Let us know all about it on social media. We'd love for you to share any photos that you manage to take. If you have your own outdoor space like a garden, I'm going to show you some handy tips for carrying out a garden bug count. Let's head outside. Okay, so now we're out in my garden and some of the things you'll need here are a pen or pencil, some paper to write on, and a tub or a cup of some kind that will help us do our count. It's also a good idea to bring a larger tray or tub. You'll soon see why. You might also want to wear gloves during this activity. Your hands might get a bit dirty, but you should wash them afterwards anyway. When we're in the garden, there are two types of areas that we want to start looking for mini beasts. Firstly, we want to have a look in the undergrowth. If you have any areas of soil, maybe just underneath some plants or bushes, this will be great. A technique that I find is sometimes quite helpful is to scoop a little bit of soil into a small tub and have a look around in that soil. Often, if you have a patch of dead leaves like this, moving the leaves to the side will be really helpful in spotting lots of mini beasts down on the ground. Just in that very quick search, so far I found quite a few ants, a couple of slugs and a ladybird. We can start to write down our results in our notebook. Again, I've drawn a table that you can copy. Here it is much bigger on the screen for you to copy onto your own notebook. I'm going to keep a count using tally marks just like before. Remember, you can add the names of any mini beasts that you find along the way. If you're using a small tub to collect mini beasts, what you can do is then pop those mini beasts onto a larger tray so that you don't get confused and count them again. Now, I'm going to carry on with my bug count for 10 or 15 minutes and just repeat that process. Okay, so I've completed my count down on the ground and I found a whole bunch of different mini beasts. 
have a look and see what you found the most of and think about why those mini beasts in particular might like to hang around on the ground. Importantly, I placed all the mini beasts that I collected back where I found them in the soil and under the plants and you should do the same. Let's move on to our second area in the garden because we're now going to look a bit higher up in the trees, bushes and plants. We are going to use a technique called tree or bush beating, which is easier if you have someone to help you out like an adult. What you do is grab your bigger tree and hold it right under the bush or tree. Get your helper to shake the bush and encourage mini beasts to drop into your tree. Remember to be careful with any pretty flowers or plants, we don't want to damage them. For high plants like tall bushes and trees, you can use a stick to hit the leaves and shake the mini beasts out. Here's a top tip, if you're using this technique on trees or bushes that are taller than you, keep your eyes watching the tree and not looking up because you don't want to get mini beasts and bits of tree falling into your eyes. We're going to have a look in our tree and keep note of what we see in our notebook. I found a few spiders. Okay, I'm going to carry on for 10 minutes or so and see what I find. Again, once I was finished with that count, I returned the mini beasts to where I found them. We can just tip them gently onto the soil near the plants that we got them from. Well done! You completed the bug count. By carrying out a bug count, you've done some really useful science. Bug counts are a helpful method for scientists like you to keep an eye on biodiversity in your local area and to monitor whether climate change and human activity is having an effect on the survival of the mini beasts around us. Let's have a look at my final results. I did find quite a few spiders and a few caterpillars. We can now look at the differences between the types of mini beasts we found on the ground and up in the plants. Where did you find most of your mini beasts? What was the most popular mini beast on the ground? What about in the trees and bushes? Why might some mini beasts prefer to be up high? What will they find higher up in the trees and bushes? Is there something for them to eat up there? These are all questions that we would love for you to think about. You can share your thoughts and ideas with us on social media and if you try out a bug count, we would love to hear all about it. If you have a look in the description of this video, you'll see we've included some links to resources that you can use to carry out more wildlife surveys like this one, as well as learn more about why this is important work. We have also included downloadable templates for you to use during your bug count, such as tables to help you sort the mini beasts that you find and keep track of how many you have. Thank you so much for joining us for today's GSC at Home. Please keep joining us at 10am on weekdays. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Until next time, bye!